Actually, I don't want to mispronounce your name, so maybe you can state your name yourself. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Jiren Zhang. Uh, uh, I will talk about our, our work in incremental precision preserving symbolic inference for probabilistic -pro programs. It's a joint work with Professor Jin Lin Xue. So, generally speaking, probabilistic programming tries to unify general, general purpose programming and probabilistic modeling. So therefore, probabilistic programming languages often extend from a basic language and may introduce two features of probabilistic models in, into their basic language, such as uh, probabilistic assignments and observed statements. And probabilistic programming can be applied in applications in such as machine learning, computer vision, and financial marketing, which can be demonstrated by those representative papers. So the purpose of prob probabilistic programming is to do conduct static inference to compute a probability distribution uh, given a group of data or array, or array data. However, the inference of probabilistic programs remains a difficult problem to solve generally. Uh, different probabilistic uh, program systems take different approaches, uh, such as dynamic inference, which is a sampling-based approach. Others conduct static inference, such as symbolic inference. So what this paper is about, assume we have inferred a program, a probability program into a probability distribution given a group of data. Now the data evolves to a, a new group of data. Intuitively, we can stack, uh, conduct inference to compute a new distribution. However, it may be expensive. So our work concerns how to incrementally compute the new distribution from the inferred distribution since uh, while keep its precision. So let's jump to uh, probability programming with a uh, small example. Yeah, what distinguishes with zero programs are probabilistic assignments and observed elements. Probabilistic assignments uh, assign distributions to variables. Uh, here, flip 0 0.5 is a Bernoulli distribution with point, uh, parameter 0 0.5, which returns 0 or 1 <coughs> with equal probability 0 0.5. And uniform 0, 1 selects random values between 0 and, and 1, uniform at random. And observed statements condition some program variables to certain values, such as 0 or 1 in this program. <coughs> we know that there are two input array data used in these programs, control and treat, it, which are used in the following four loops to condition probability distributions. Here, we call this kind of loop as a conditioning loop. So given a program in the left, we can conduct a uh, symbolic inference using PSI. A PSI is a whole program symbolic solver for probabilistic programs which uh, work by time and year. <coughs> Let's look at this program. If we, uh, if we do not know concern about the, the loops, there are two program passes uh, in this program, if they are an else passes. The then pass is from line four to line 12, and the error pass starts from uh, line 4 to line 7 plus the line 13 to line 17. And PSI conducts inference symbolically along these two passes, and we can achieve two joint probability distribution, distributions before the return statement in the forms of probability set functions, PDN and PRs. And at the return statement, PSI adds this, that's PDN and PRs and then integrates all the variables except the return variable is effective and normalize it. And finally, we achieve the new posterior distribution of is effective, which can be expressed as a symbolic expression like this. So if we make some changes to the, to the data, such as addition, deletion, and modification, how we quickly compute the new posterior distribution of is effective since the changes my timing. So our approach tries to adapt the pass's probability test function to the new one since the changes of data won't change the structure of the program. So firstly, we conduct an intra-procedurally positive analysis to separate all the passes. However, there will be, there will be a pass explosion if we conduct four pass sensitive analysis if the iterations of the loop contain branches. Uh, here I give a small example. There is an if, if statement in this condition loop. The number of passes will increase to, to, to the power of the, of the 100 if the data size increases to 100. 
So we do not distinguish passes uh, in the iterations of loops and we conduct a uh, pass insensitive analysis. Here I give a small example uh, which contains three condition loops labeled as ID1, ID2, and ID3. And after our pre inference, yeah, uh, we got get uh, four passes, even if the loops of the uh, the iterations of the loops make any branches. The, for example, the pass with empty state uh, means uh, there's n there are no condition loops on this pass, and its corresponding pass specific PDF is a combination of the PDFs of the passes that do not have loops. And these two anal uh, analyses are both PSR based. So let's recall to re this example. After our pre inference, we will get two passes and its corresponding pass specific PDF, which uh, the pass is labeled by the loop IDs. Here, loop IDs is represented by uh, line numbers. And now we have, if we make some changes to the control through a standard data dependence, we can know loop 9 and loop 14 has been affected. And their corresponding pass specific PDFs are not correct anymore which are needed to be updated. So since the passes, these two passes are independent of each other, it's focus on the then pass first. So we found the loop line is an iteration in the changeable condition loop, which means it then has a cross iteration data dependence and then write to into non-local variables. This is mainly because it deals with a exchangeable data sequence. Here the exchangeability means even if we change the orders, uh, change the order of the data points in control, it should not uh, affect the new uh, the posterior distribution of is effective, which implies the loop deal with the data should be iteration in the changeable. So this phenomenon is not ju just a coincidence. Uh, we I quote a sentence from a paper from Pattern Analysis uh, and Machine Intelligence. It says the natural habit of most base methods is data represented by exchangeable sequences of observations. So we think iteration in changeable condition loops may exist in many BSM methods. And indeed, uh, the condition loops in benchmark suits in PSI, R2, and so on are found to be iteration in changeable. So the inference for iteration in changeable condition loops have, has the following three properties. Here the input state sigma means the PDF between, uh, before the loop and LI represents the i's iteration of the condition loop L. So authoritivity is uh, obvious. And commutativity means the inference of the iterations can be conducted in any order, which means the iterations won't affect each other. And uh, the last one, multiplicativity means uh, the inference of the iterations affects the input state by multiplying their input results. So based on this pro properties, we got two conclusions. Since the inference uh, has a, uh, assertivity and commutativity, to, uh, in order to evaluate the iterations, we just need to keep the input state of the loop. And second conclusion is, if the iterations are added or deleted, they affect the input state by multiplying or dividing their input results. So based on these two conclusions, we can conduct incremental inference. Uh, for the loop uh, label as 9, it's input state is FBN. <coughs> and for addition, if we are adding uh, add one new data point 1 to the original control data, the new pass specific PDF can be computed by PDN with the inferred results of the added iteration. Here is a represented PC and PC the evaluated using the input state of them. And similarly, for addition, uh, for deletion, if we delete one data from the original data, we can divide in one minus PC to compute the new PDF. Uh, one, min min one minus PC is the uh, info results of the deleted iteration. And for modification, if we modify the fifth element in control from zero to one, we treat this modification as deleting the error first and then adding a new data point. One, and here the results we computed using this incremental inference is exactly the same as the PSI, which uh, is exactly the results of the of the program that's 
conducted inference by PSI. So the key question is how to decide which iterations are added or deleted. Here I've given a small general program. There are two array data, A and B, which are used in this condition loop. And the range of the loop is m to m plus k, which can be arbitrary in integers. And the index of the array can be any format of i. Since we only care about the data used in each iteration, uh, changes or not, we label each iteration with their used data. So we can construct a new data set C in which every element represents its corresponding iteration. And given the new and the uh, old data, we can construct C old and C new correspondingly, and the added and deleted iterations can be computed by set operations. So to restrict the incremental inference only to the iterations of a condition loop affected by the observ observed data, we need to apply two transformations, variable lifetime extension and variable pre-renaming. Pre Here, I do not want to explain these two tra transformations, uh, but I will give a small example to illustrate why we need to do this. So let's record this program. <coughs> After pre-inference, we can achieve p then, and we can conduct incremental inference like this. <coughs> but if we move the statement pc equals to uniform 0, 1 into the if statement, pc will be integrated out at the end of its corresponding uh, scope. And the new pdn will not contain pc anymore. And we cannot uh, conduct incremental inference like this. Uh, however, we can do so once our true transformations has been applied. So far, I've introduced the incremental inference of probabilistic programs with a uh, one-man function and loop interaction in the changeable loops, condition loops. The approach can be uh, extended to include function calls and loops with possibly cross-iteration data dependencies and multi-dimensional loops, as we discussed in our paper. So our, core, uh, our tool is called IS1B, which is uh, PSR-based. And in the evaluation part, we want to answer three questions about how IS1B performs comparing with the state-of-the-art Smoke Solver PSI. So firstly, we keep the original data size of the program fixed and evaluate the percentages of changed data points, such as 1%, 2%, 5% uh, in our experiment. And then we keep the fixed number of changed data points, such as 10 data points, by adding 10, 10 data points, deleting 10 data points, and modifying 10 data points to the original data, and vary the original data size. And finally, we keep the fixed percentage of changed data points, such as uh, 5%, and vary the data size. Here, our RQ2 is like a strong scaling experiment, and RQ3 is a weak scaling like experiment. And for all the three questions, we have used seven benchmarks. Uh, among them, five, five with one main function, two with function course, and one with a two dimensional array, which is linearized. And we compare ISO1B with uh, PSI, which conducts inference from scratch for every change, such as addition, deletion. Or modification. So for for the first question, we uh, the ranging uh, the degrees of change is ranging over one percent, two percent, and five percent, and the data size is, the original data size are fixed and then selected uh, selected so that PSI can terminate in minutes. So for example, the coin bias benchmark is data size is selected as four hundred, and adding one percent means adding 40 data points to the original data. So the speedups may be different due to different benchmarks. The overall PSI can be, uh, IS1B can be one or two orders mag magnitude faster than PSI. So for the sec second question, we keep the fixed number of 20 data points, such as 10 data points, and it will vary original data size. And in this setting, the data, as the data size increases, actually its degrees of changes decreases, since uh, we only we, we make fixed uh, change the data points as 10. So obviously, the speed up increases as the data size increases. 
since the amount of changes decreases. And this example is the example we introduced in the previous slides. And uh, we found we find that for each con configuration, such as addition, deletion, or modification, its speed up increases as the data size increases from 40 to 320. And the speed up uh, under modification is about half of the speed up under addition or deletion, since we treat the modification as a combination of addition and deletion. So finally, we want to know <coughs> our how about how our incremental inference performs for large data size. Here, we, we given the fixed percentage of change, change data points, such as 5% and vary our data size. So in this setting, as the data size increases, its degrees of changes are kept the same, such as 5%. And the speed up increases as the data size increases. Uh, demonstrating again the performance advantages of our incremental inference. This is meaning because uh, PSI spends more and more time to compute and simplify the PDF at the end of a loop iteration, since uh, our incremental inference only concerns part of the iterations, such as only 5%. So to summary, we enable incremental sim symbolic inference in process programs when some array data and goes small changes. And we conduct an intra-procedurally past system analysis except for meet overall process analysis within loops. And we avoid expensive simple inference from scratch while also being precision preserving. Thank you. Uh, the expressiveness is uh, exactly the same as the PSI language we based on. Can you elaborate a little bit for people like me who don't know PSI? Uh, you can deal with uh, uh, for, loop iteration, uh, for loops and uh, function calls and uh, something like that. <laughs> Uh, uh, currently, we we just concern about the data changes, not about the model changes. Any more questions? No, then uh, let's thank the speaker again.